so I am back and ready to program the uh, speed controller so I thought I would do it on camera um, I've got the heli pretty much ready to fly I've gone through the mic the micro beast uh, setup you know I'm gonna go through it again of course to be sure but um, I just wanted to show the uh, Conchonic uh, speed control programming so I'll do the stick programming first and then I'll show the prog unit afterwards so first thing I'll do is uh, I probably should have booted this up this is going to take about a minute to boot but I'll show the, um, the my final wiring layout I'll show that and the 10 channel receiver turned out to be more of a headache than it was probably worth <laughs> but I got it I got it I had to mount it on the side what the hell I'll show I'll show this all later on uh, this video should not be that long so and uh, check it out um, the uh, I bought these are 120 millimeter plastic tail blades. So I ordered some 135 carbon fiber blades for it. Because I'm just not happy with plastic blades on it, but I'm really surprised. Here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, turn on the helicopter. Hopefully, you can hear the beeps. Let that boot. Okay, helicopter's on. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, plug in the speed control. Push the little button on the side to put it into programming mode. Oh, I did that wrong. Okay, now I got it. I'm going to unplug the speed control. That was. Oh, look at that. Okay, sorry guys. <laughs> Alright, so I don't care about that. Sorry. Alright, so I set mode 1 on the speed control. Now I'm going to plug it in again. Now push the button on the side again and wait for mode 4. probably warn me again. This is the new IX-14, by the way. I wasn't expecting to get it so quick. New at the time of this video, anyway. Right? That's pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah, I'll show you all the telemetry stuff I put on there and everything. But I think what I'm going to do now is jump over to the uh, computer with the prog unit and show you what that looks like what I do on the uh, on the PC. I'll be back. Alright, so here we are on the PC and we're looking at the uh, 
programming unit, the prog unit, what they call. And so I got plugged in. Uh, I've got the speed control plugged in. And so the first thing I know I got to do here is reverse the rotation of the motor because I know it's backwards. I could have unplugged and changed two wires or I just check that box right there. Uh, let's see. The gear ratio, I probably should have already known. Eleven, eleven point five six to one. So let's see. I'm going to change this one to eleven point five six. To one, uh, it's ten poles. My auto timing, I always leave. Spool up time, um, <laughs> I always take advantage of the full sixty seconds on this. Uh, And then this governor, I mean, I don't know, I could be doing it wrong, but I, it's pretty much kind of like the hobby wing governor where you spool it up and you keep it for a certain amount of time. The only difference is with this, they, like hobby wing, you can do it at zero pitch. With this one, they want you to have blades on it, is what I read in, you know, in the manual, but. And that's pretty much all I'll do there. The other the other thing I'll do over here in, in the expert is come down here to slew rate. And the slew rate will affect <clears throat> when you change flight modes, um, how fast it changes. So if you're going from say a thousand to fourteen hundred RPM, it will gradually bring it up. I usually change this to 20,000 I think I think I put it on 20 the last time and it was a lot better and then this one I'll change to 8 or let's see I forget what I think 12 I put this one on negative negative is when it comes down I think I change it to 12,000 and that basically will was you know when you change flight modes it will slowly climb up and then slowly come down if you leave it on the default it's really quick very abrupt and the little helicopter it ain't too bad but with like a 700 or 800 it's you know if you do it on the ground it's really fast really fast and the governor on these things is, is really amazing you won't hear any change in the motor at all. So, so that's about it. I set up the governor. I want a soft start, 60 seconds. So it takes a full minute to get up to speed. The battery is lipo. Oh, the other thing too here is the back voltage. You want to change this to uh, 8.4. I'll change it to 7.4 because it's going to run the fan. And, uh, so you wanted to change that. And then that's it. I've got my slew rate. Uh, the timing is auto. I've had a problem with that. I reversed the direction. Slew rate. The governor. And I think that's that's everything. And then I'll come over here and and it tells you parameters have been transferred to the ESC successfully. Okay. And that's cool. You can hover over this stuff and you get little little information about what it all does. Yeah, there's slew rate. 
influences how quick a higher throttle position is reached. Time is referring to whole throttle range, 0 to 100 percent. So 100 microseconds to 60,000 microseconds. So that would be like really slow, I guess. So it's pretty cool. Uh, and that's everything. That's everything on it. So we'll go back and I'll show you my uh, final wiring layout and uh, go over anything else that I did to it. And uh, we'll be back. All right. So uh, here we are checking out the finished, if you want to call it, project. So I'll start in the front. Um, we've pretty much seen this in the beginning, but uh, I this battery I have here for the fan, I was testing the fan. I'm probably just gonna plug the fan into the uh, slave on the speed controller and that'll work so. And then uh, this wire is for my uh, flight pack voltage. I got an EC5 on there. The batteries are just sitting in here right now. And I don't have them on the battery tray. Fans in there. Um, and then this is the uh, wire from the speed controller. Goes back. I used hot glue to hold this, which is not holding. I'm going to have to come up with something else for that. Uh, servos, I did loom the wires, and that worked out decent. And this is where I got the gigantic AR-10-400. <laughs> and, you know, there wasn't really a lot of options. This thing is a lot bigger than I thought. So... I talked to the, and one of the problems I ran into with this is the receiver and the MicroBeast both have switches because this is a power safe receiver and that's a MicroBeast HD. And so, but the switches work different. So I didn't have, I couldn't use one switch. I would have had to use two switches. So instead of doing that, I just plug, you know, I just plug it in. And when I plug it in, both units will go on. I talked to the people at the MicroBeast, you know, online, and they answered pretty quickly. And they said, yeah, you would just basically run your battery power. Battery power here will split and, you know, one will go to the MicroBeast, one will go to the receiver. And then you just take the two... You don't want power between the two. So I just basically took out the battery wires. And so that there's not power between the two. It's just they both get their own separate. So the servos are powered by the MicroBeast. And the receiver has its own power from, from the same battery. I'm not using two batteries. You could use two, but I'm only going to use one. And then I put the MicroBeast inside this little box which worked out pretty decent uh the wires aren't they really aren't tugging on it too much this will close up one thing i thought was a little weird is it's it is pretty close pretty close when the rotor blades are on there to this thing but that's the way it is and then out here is this is for the telemetry and then there's a satellite here, if I could do that. And then one on the other side. So I probably put the receiver pack here. I had a little, very little issue with the rudder servo getting the right arm for it because there's not a whole lot of room there. I'll try to hold this steady. See how that worked out, but um, and then, you know, the wiring it all goes through the little box. I mean, it looks pretty good. I'm kind of, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. So, 
that's that. Uh, tail. Assembly is nothing really special. It's pretty much the same. Same stuff that you would see on any other helicopter, except for the closed tail box. Right? I don't have any of the canopies on yet, but I'll, I guess I could take a picture with the canopies on it. See what that looks like. But well, that's it. That's the finished project. And so I will get a maiden flight, but I'm going to go through the entire setup again of the Micro Beast, just to be sure. And, uh, maybe I'll see if I can put the canopies on real quick. Well, I, actually, the, the back one, you have to take, it slips over the tail boom. So I don't know how easy that's going to be to put on, but I'll put the other ones on and uh, come back real quick. All right, so check it out. In order to get this on, I've got to take the boom supports off and the tail rotor assembly because this, if I can get out far enough, the boom is actually inside that thing. So I'll probably, probably fly it without this tailpiece on to begin with it mounts here and here a couple more bolts down there for the tail section so but that's the front of it anyway um it goes on real easy these are magnets here and then the little grommets like a line has very nice I see that hits a little bit there. I might have to relieve that a little bit. But that's easy. That's an easy fix. So that's it. I will, uh, my next video will be a maiden. I don't know when that's going to be because it's really crappy out here. But, uh, uh, appreciate everybody checking out the video, and uh, we'll see you soon.